Dr. Oh. Isla Ali Farzan, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Wa Alaikum Assalam, Dr. Farzan. <laughs> I'm still not not used to of it. I mean, it it. Yeah. I worked so hard just to get it, like people yes. call me doctor and stuff. But yeah. now when it's done, it's it's weird in a way. I don't know how to explain. Exactly, you know. And <laughs> I have some other problem. Uh, when I am scared that if I write doctor, people will take me as medical doctor, and maybe they will ask me that I have got yeah. <laughs> throat infection, and then I will explain, no, I'm a PhD doctor. Sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, yeah. yeah, that would be embarrassing if somebody can see yeah. that, yeah. So, yeah. Ispa, ladies and gentlemen, here is the Director of Assessment at the National Board of Certified Counselors. Did I get it right? Yes, National Board for Certified Counselors. Yes, there I work as Director of Assessment, but more interestingly, as the lead psychometrician. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I don't know what that person does, but <laughs> well, it, it sounds very cool. How, how about you tell us what, to, what you do? Uh, so I belong to the testing industry, educational and professional test. So we write tests uh, just like GRE, uh, TOEFL, high school certificate exams at NBCC. Um, we are creating professional uh, examinations. So the counselors get certificates or licensure and it is attempted by like 50,000 people every year. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know what, what I, uh, I take out of what you just said, data, yeah. so much data. Oh yes. Right? Yes. Yes. A research extreme <laughs> data. <laughs> so my mentor, uh, Dr. Thomas Christie, uh, he was used to say, my girl believes in, Hundreds of thousands, nothing less than that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Amazing. I in my dissertation, I collected yeah. 103 responses, and that too, I had to go and plead people, call them a dozen of times to get their response because it was very psychological in nature. It was a personal okay. question, sort of a thing. So okay. they don't want to talk about their colleagues. Nobody wants to talk about their colleagues. Yeah, so yeah. It unless very, it's anonymous. I don't know. Yeah, but, but here you have like tons of data and it's coming in. You have longitudinal data with every year and everything. So yes. anyway, <laughs> that's not what I want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about education, um, Ispa. And when I thought mm -hmm. that I should talk about education with somebody, you were the first person that came to my mind. Okay. And Ispa, we met in Wisconsin, if you remember. Yes, I do. And there, I thought you were you were a master's student who just came in when you were a PhD student who were, who was near to completion. That was the first surprise there. You, you're yeah. so active and vocal, and uh, that perhaps presents you much younger than what <laughs> you might be. So I mean, it's, that's a compliment. Uh, yeah, that's a very I, I, best part of this interview. You know, <laughs> you know, while, while I was making it up, I was. I got a little confused towards the end that I didn't talk about this wrong But <laughs> anyway, seriously, what I want to say is that you are very expressive and that's what I like about you. And okay. it's always a pleasure to talk to you. So, Isba, yeah. Yeah. was education always your preference for, for your education route? I mean, did you want to study education? No. Uh, that was something chosen by my parents. This is like all the parents do. I was the eldest one among six children. So they chose first, they said, you will be a medical doctor. Like all the parents say, I failed to get admission in a medical college. Now I can say that confidently. Um, you know, <laughs> 20 years back, I was very shy. <laughs> to say, okay, I didn't get admission in a medical college, but yes, I didn't get. So then they chose that I should study English and become a lecturer in English because that is considered a very decent and doable profession for girls in our patriarchal society in Pakistan. So yes, this is what they chose for me. 
but once they chose when i once i entered into it uh then i give credit to them that they gave me this liberty that then i made many moves here and there so i got exposure to many things i started as a lecturer in english but then i joined uh, the first university examination board in pakistan the khan university examination board and there also i changed many routes i was first handling english then languages then special projects you know exploring many things so this is how this was uh, an effort of my parents and myself and i reached to this place interesting now when yeah. you tell me um, that you were aiming to become a doctor because your parents wanted to yeah. become a doctor i can now totally relate it with my story yes. all the stories of at least our generation i don't know what the current generation's uh, criteria yeah. is yeah. as my parents are concerned but it yeah. was it was such a such a pressure especially the yeah. years when you are in your high school that we call yeah. fsc back then yeah. it's like you are on a death row or something yeah. like <laughs> the decision is about to be made yeah you not be able to get into an engineering university or whatever program your parents are aiming for you yeah. you will be yeah. an embarrassment for the family all of a yeah. sudden yeah. so now that you are in you in the us and you have mm -hmm. experienced both the worlds mm -hmm. and you have seen the students here mm -hmm. how do you how do you compare the two worlds uh, as far as education is concerned i know it is a very general question and i have asked you a whole universe but just try to answer it from whatever perspective you feel comfortable okay so you know my part of job is to respond to candidates uh for their queries because they want to speak to someone um especially if they have failed i really appreciate here that if they fail they accept it and they want to know how can they improve it so when i failed to get admission in a medical college i was in a shock you know i was and the other thing was how to say that i have failed i didn't get the marks so that shyness because everyone was saying is by such a good student you know she will reach there she will reach here and then your cousins have got admission there your friends have got to got to that college that pressure i think that stops us from saying that we are a failure and when we don't say we are a failure then we don't we are not open to explore what went wrong so this is one thing that please let people fail and let people say that openly a uh, shame should not be that big part of the parent children conversation that is one thing the other thing is here people are uh, those those people who call me um how to improve they are very open they they ask this question they ask that question and some of those questions are really silly i get amazed like how can a person done with the masters can think of these things but uh those questions take them somewhere in our society i don't know how it is uh in your culture fazan because you belong to punjab and uh, punjab is quite open as compared to karachi where more adab adab are there mm -hmm. uh we are we are told to respond be obedient always walk one step behind our elders always say yes to whatever is asked if we are sitting in um, a group of people 
uh, with elders never question what they are saying. So in a way, we are trained to be obedient. Mm -hmm. It is really, really bad. Uh, you know, you cannot uh, figure out a new way unless you explore it. And you can only explore it if you ask questions. So this is one thing I really do not like about our society, that we do not train our children to be more interrogative. Even when I see small children, like two, three years old children, parents feed information to them. You know, this is TV, this is car, and they don't encourage the children to ask, what is this? What is that? You know, and because parents don't like to respond, uh, there are questions. I don't want to go into that area, but like we tell them, follow us when we are offering prayers, but we don't introduce the theology. We don't introduce the concepts. We just tell them how to practice. So if you tell people how to practice and you don't make them think or understand why they are practicing, then what, Then you see what is happening in Pakistan in coronavirus these days. <laughs> people want to offer prayers not realizing what danger is involved there. So um, these are major things which really bother me as an educationist from Pakistan. I, I, when you were talking about comparisons and then the questions, uh, there were stories that were circulating in my mind. Yeah. I remember that uh, we are three brothers, right? Yeah. And I am in the middle. I have an older okay. one and a younger one. And both of them were always first in their class oh. examinations. <laughs> and yeah. I was never, I've never stood first in any examination. Uh, the only competition I stood first in is a public speaking competition here. Okay. And that's the only, only yeah. competition in my whole life where I stood first. So my life back then, Ispa, was a mm. constant and an excruciating comparison with my yeah. younger and my older brother. And yeah. uh, uh, oh, yeah. that didn't make me hate my brothers, but that mm -hmm. really made me feel like sh the, the shame uh, that yes. sinks in in you. Yeah. And you, yeah. become, you become a less confident child, I would say. I was, was not very confident back then. And here I see that the parents are always applauding their children. They're encouraging mm -hmm. them and they're appreciating no matter what their scores are, no matter what the position yeah. is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So here they highlight the, the good things. And in Pakistan, they highlight what you don't have and others have. So this is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. So you are always told that this person has got that achievement. You don't have that. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. This is funny. So my mother used to compare with the only good student in the whole family when yeah. all others are total waste. I mean, look at the yeah. others. Why yeah. do you look at the only one example? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is unfair. <laughs> this is unfair. And Faizan, very interesting thing. So there was always one person who was come getting the first rank in your class. Mm -hmm. Now look at the whole batch yep. of high school. You know, most of them are at the equal level of achievement. Mm -hmm. True. This was not just dependent on getting the rank, but success depends on so many aspects of the personality. Yep. Um, that is one thing in our society that our parameters of, uh, to measure success, they are very few. So if someone is a very good singer, you know, or if someone is a very good actor, or someone is a go very good poet, they have to do something besides doing these things. We cannot follow the passion because the parameters are different. The parameters are 
what is your grade what what is your salary what is your designation so these things um they stop us from exploring a lot of things and when you were talking about your um elder and younger brother mm -hmm. i have an opposite story so i am the eldest of the six mm -hmm. i were younger to me and now i realize how much um you know how how i was exploring that <laughs> exploiting that you know <laughs> all the time telling them do this do that and um all those childhood memories when i was like uh, for instance i i i told my younger brothers that if you don't appreciate my the dish i have cooked <laughs> i cook the next dish you know <laughs> 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 yep, yep. The elders are always the bosses, and yeah. <laughs> they, so have, they have an unwritten authorization from the yeah. parents, like to to order or decree yeah. anything they they deem yeah. is good for all the yeah. people. I remember my elder brother used to collect all the idi. <laughs> 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 that was that was painful i mean all the it, it goes to him and he's yeah. very careful in then spending it on our toys or our <laughs> you know so whatever but yeah 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 <laughs> so you were the equal contributor in that but yes yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> but now uh, we even don't friend. get easy yeah. so how is that situation with you fazan uh, which one you don't get any ed do you i don't get it anymore i used to get it back oh, yeah. yeah i yeah. not give it i mean there are so many kids all of a sudden in the family i don't know where they came from <laughs> <laughs> but all yeah. of a sudden there are dozens and dozens of these cousins daughters yeah. and sons who are there with yeah. their aunt like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm saying that adab you know <laughs> you'll get your easy don't worry yeah no. yeah oh i will get it from my husband yes for sure <laughs> <laughs> but that calculation that is gone you know we have met five people they have given us this much ed now we have go to the we, we should go to the sixth house but no they get they give less ed kind of you know discussion yep. so that is gone yeah yeah you know this brings me to another point that i feel is different here Mm -hmm. the responsibility of resources your own resources from the very childhood they yeah. are collecting money they know that they if they need to buy something they have to collect money all year to buy yeah. that and even yeah. the parents are contributing to it and at the end of the day it is the parents money but yeah. they get trained to have more financial responsibility yeah. and back home we are like till we get to university we are like uh, the pampered yeah. kids of our parents exactly. yeah 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 even after university i was i was a pampered kid um for gadgets i never bought anything for myself in pakistan even the laptop even the phone anything i just had to go and sit in the lounge uh, and just tell everyone i need a a laptop you know this is my budget and please buy one for me so i never paid attention to these life skills the, these are life skills you know yeah but um, and yes i had no training that if you are short of money how will you survive which here i see that even when they are like 15 16 years old parents are conscious that we need to train them so after 18 when they go out of the house they should be ready so when they are 18 19 they are living separately they are doing a lot of trial and error they are buying old used cars uh they are going to mechanic um, they know how to paint so when they reach to our age they have so much exposure to uh, of how to cope up with different things and i didn't have any of that yep neither did i so yeah yeah very big difference there do you feel yeah. like their education system also has to contribute in this life skill learning 
because the education sector doesn't put pressure mm-hmm. so that helps them in doing so many things and in our uh, society we have to think of the grades all the time oh yes oh yes so pressure stops us yeah i, I can see how um, back home if we try to do something different our parents were like okay study only that's your only business yeah and yeah. Yeah. but also in schools i've seen in high schools there are classes on uh, carpenting and cooking there they teach life skills too here there's a possibility at least when we don't even have an option in our school systems of uh, learning these skills right yeah yeah we don't have an option in in my school there was oh wow <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it it was a convent school so there was a class for stitching and embroidery and trust me um for 3 years i was taking it the class was once a week uh-huh and uh the nun uh she was used to trace something on a piece of paper and then in that one hour we had to sit in the class and do the embroidery and ask the nun how to make it so for 3 years i was using the single piece of cloth you know <laughs> <laughs> because i was going to that class and gossiping with my friends you know we had so much to gossip so it never got completed for 3 years so the fourth year which was the last year the nun asked me where are the pieces you have embroidered and i told her that i don't know they got disappeared <laughs> <laughs> But that, that, <laughs> yeah that's very interesting i mean i had no interest in embroidery uh-huh. um so but still i mean that's impressive that you at least had an option i am pretty sure the new schools uh, at least the private ones would would be offering things yeah. but uh, on gen- on a general scale i don't think yeah. we have uh, that that option for our kids there yeah 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 um, I- i'm sure that the new private schools are giving this option the public schools are another story so um, that is a sad story uh, we don't the the underprivileged people who are already underprivileged and we by not providing them better opportunities we make them stay in the same social class which mm-hmm. is really sad yep yeah. yeah. unfortunately yeah. so is ba but- I think I'll let you go. I know you yeah. are very busy with your meetings and everything. Yeah. Uh, any any last words about about uh, your your hopes for the education system back home and uh, do you do you see things happening? I see things um happening in private schools a lot. Mm-hmm. So they are now giving more importance to sports, to critical thinking. um in public schools it's the same uh, although the government is trying to change the curriculum which is a very good effort uh also let me use uh, this opportunity to tell people that they can adopt schools public schools in pakistan um sindh education foundation offers this option and we have adopted a school using that which is a very good way to pay back to your society to bring some change in at least one or a couple of schools so my message to everyone is that try to make any contribution you know small or big sometimes we are hesitant to do anything because we think it's too small nothing is small if something is happening so with all this let me move to something else and fezan thanks a lot for inviting it was a very good opportunity to talk to you uh, i really like talking to you you are so open um, i really enjoy talking to you and then talking to all the people who will be watching thank you so much as well it's always a pleasure like i told i still yeah. um, sometimes remember the wisconsin days like we chatted yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Right, we chatted so much i never yeah. that much Yeah, yeah so exactly that was wonderful 
And yeah. uh, again, thank you for your insights. They were very valuable, especially your last message was truly, truly a gem. So even a small, yeah. small contribution yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. So with that, everyone, we'll let Ispa go. Thank you, Ispa, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Yes, bye. Bye-bye.